up on the yard. But aside from the pitching, a couple of everyday playing old pros have risen to the occasion. Red Shane Deans to the Braves and Hank Bauer of the Yankees. Shane Deans has been playing tremendous ball throughout the series, although his prowess should come as no surprise. He's been making the tough plays look easy for years. Yesterday, he tripled and scored the run, which gave Spawn all the margin he needed to win. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked to stand here at Yankee Stadium by Bob Shepard, the uh, public address announcer. As we get set now in the uh, background for the rendition of the national anthem. So let us listen. The 22nd Infantry Division Command, under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer Patrick J. Austin, will accompany Miss Lucy Monroe in our national anthem. identification. If you want real Vichy, get the yellow label, yellow label, yellow label, yellow label. Get the Vichy with the bright yellow label, Saratoga Vichy. This is WGY's connected. There go the New York Yankees out of the field. The weather this afternoon is beautiful for baseball. A little cool but very pleasant blue skies overhead. Just a very slight breeze blowing toward right. Not much of one, however. And it's a sunny afternoon. Sun is shining bright. Out to the mound goes Bob Turley to start his warm-ups with Yogi Berra as the Yankees have taken the field. Now, speaking about the great job that Red Shandy's, an old pro on the Milwaukee Braves, has done. And uh, Hank Bauer, on the other side of the fence, has finally stopped yesterday after he had hit safely in 17 straight World Series games, an all-time record. But he still uh, leads New York in hitting with a 4-12 batting average. The Yankees have made a total of 21 hits so far. Hank is seven, one-third of the team total. The Yanks have scored 12 runs, and Hank has driven home seven. And the Yanks have swatted six homers, and Hank has had exactly half of them. Well, we may have new heroes this afternoon. We shall see. And here to tell you about it at the microphone is a fellow who's been doing a top-notch job, the voice of the Milwaukee Braves, Earl Gillespie. Earl? Well, thank you very much, Bob Wolf, and good afternoon, everybody, on a cool day here in New York City, the fifth game of the 1958 World Series. Fastballing Bob Turley, 21 victories and 70 feats. On the 1958 American League campaign, in World Series competition, Turley has one victory and three defeats. Against the Milwaukee Braves in the World World Series, he has one win and one loss. And his World Series earned run average, 4.18. He was belted out of the box in the second game at Milwaukee County Stadium. Billy Broughton leading off, went off against Turley last Thursday with a home run. First pitch to Bill is a ball, it's low, and it's ball one, no strikes, and this ball game is underway. Milwaukee with a decided edge in the series, three victories to the Yankees, one. Outfield playing around to the right for the left-handed batting Billy Bruton, who takes ball two. It's high outside. It's 2-0. Billy, who has been one of the shining stars 
in the series, has four hits and nine times at bat, hitting at 444, one homer and two runs batted in. Infield, a little bit around to the right. The pitch is cut on, fouled off the mask of Yogi Berra, bouncing back on the screen. And it's now a ball two and a strike one count. In the Yankee outfield, Elston Howard today is playing left field. Mickey Mantle in center field and Hank Bauer in right. Jerry Lumpy at third base, Tony Kubek at short, Gil McDougal at second base, and Bill Scowron at first base. Turley Hurley on the mound, a big fastball right-hander with Yogi Berra doing the catching. 2-1 pitch is too low, and it's ball three. Back on the first base coaching lines for manager Fred Haney is Johnny Fitzpatrick, who was sidelined yesterday back at his hotel with a severe cold, and it's Billy Herman coaching over at third base. The pitch. This is a strike call, and now it's a full count. 3-2 as Turley poured the fastball on the outside corner belt high. Bob Turley, who had a banner year for Casey Stengel. 21 wins and 70 feet. Comes down with a 3-2 pitch. Ball four. Bruton draws a walk. So Bob Turley walks the Braves' leadoff man, and it brings up second baseman Red Shandings. Red has been up 18 times, has five base hits, batting at 278. Two doubles and a triple. No runs batted in, but boy, what a game he's played at second base for the Braves. Switch hitter batting left-handed against the right-hander. Bruton on first base, nobody out, top half of the first inning. Sun is shining very brightly here at Yankee Stadium. The pitch. Here is a bunt on the first base line. There's a beauty. Turley over the first baseman. Picks it up. Throws to McDougal. Covering at first base to get his man. Turley over fast, but Scourin. Put in front of Big Bob and picked up that bunt on the first base line. And there's a fine sacrifice for Shane Deans. As the speedster, Billy Bruton, goes into second base. That play has scored 3-4. to four. Scourin to McDougal. Covering at first base. Brings up third baseman Eddie Matthews, a left-handed batter, who's been up 15 times in the series, has three hits, batting at 200, two doubles, and three runs batted in. He crashed one yesterday off Whitey Ford that hit the wall in deep right center field. A left-handed batter takes the curveball, low and inside, and it's ball one and no strikes. Eddie has a dubious distinction here in this 1958 Classic because he has struck out eight times. And the record for a five-game series is eight strikeouts held jointly by Rogers Hornsby and Duke Snyder. The pitch is in there for a call strike and a good curveball. It's ball one and strike one. The Yankee outfield is playing Aaron, or rather playing Matthews, around to the right. Aaron's on deck. The infield is deep. Quite a gap between third baseman Jerry Lumpy and the shortstop Tony Kubek as Kubek is way over towards second base. The pitch. Here's a swing and a ground foul down the first baseline. And it's ball one and strike two. Ball one, strike two count. Some of the fans still moving in the Yankee Stadium and we're going to have another very fine crowd for this fifth game of the series. Bob Turley in his second start. Lasted one-third of an inning in the second ball game, giving up three hits, four earned runs. He walked one and struck out one. That was the game in which Burdett defeated the Yankees 13-5. So the opponents of the second game, Turley and Burdett, are at it again here at Yankee Stadium. Runner on second base. One man is out. The pitch to Matthews. A swing and a ball. It's back out of play, and it's ball one and strike two. One and two the count. Here at Yankee Stadium, the center fielder has quite a job patrolling out there because it's 461 to straightaway center field, 457 deep left center, and 407 to deep right center field. And the stretch goes, Bob Turley, he's out in front, ball one and strike two, the pitch. Here's a swing and a high fly ball in the short right. Coming in is Hank Bauer getting out of the ball now as Bruton tags at second base. Here is Bauer making the catch and firing the ball into Tony Kubek. That ball started out off Matthews' bat like it was going to travel near that fence. But Bauer, who moved back a step, broke in suddenly and came in about ten quick steps. And for the third straight day, Roy Campanella is going to see a World Series ball game. Roy is being assisted down to the box seats right behind home plate. 
Two men are out as Matthews flies out to Bauer in right field. And it brings up the right fielder, Henry Aaron. Aaron batting at 333 with five for 15. Two doubles and no runs batted in. Outfield is shading Aaron just a shade towards left. The runner on second base, Bruton, takes the lead. Turley's pitch is a fast strike on the outside corner knee high. Strike one. On deck is the left fielder, Wes Covington. No score. We're in the top half of the first inning. Braves batting with two outs and Billy Bruton on second base. Billy walked, moved to second base, and a sacrifice by the redhead, Red Shandings. Turley checks the runner, delivers. There's a swing and a high fly ball. Center field, Mickey Mantle drifting around to his right. Under the ball now. Mickey makes the catch to retire the side. So in the first, no runs, no hits, no errors. One man was left on base. And the score as the Yankees come into bat, Milwaukee nothing, New York nothing. Well, we certainly have had a lot of pleasure and a lot of thrills watching Casey Stengel and listening to his, uh, the way he talks down in that dugout before every ball game to all the reporters. You know, there haven't been many managers like Casey Stengel. And believe you me, you seldom find a bargain like this year's World Series special. Just 79 cents buys you a brand new Gillette one-piece TV razor, a dispenser of Gillette blue blades with the sharpest edges ever honed, and a neat, compact travel case. What a buy. The Gillette TV razor is a precision built instrument a twist to the handle, and the razor opens instantly for fast blade changing and rinsing. It's double-edged, too. You get twice as many shaves per blade, save both time and money. And your Gillette TV razor delivers wonderfully refreshing shaves. Clean, easy shaves that last longer, far longer. Better get your soon. The supply is limited, and they're going fast. Ask for the Gillette one-piece TV razor set for only 79 cents at a nearby store. In the last half of the first inning, the New York Yankees will lead off with Hank Bauer. He'll be followed by Jerry Lumpy and then Mickey Mantle. The Braves outfield has Covington in left, Bruton in center field, and Aaron in right. It's Matthews at third, Logan at short, Shane Deans at second, and Torrey at first. Lobert out on the mound, and Del Crandall doing the catching. Lou Burnett, who has yet to lose a World Series game. He has four victories all over the New York Yankees. Three last year, one this year. And his World Series earned run average, a brilliant 1.50. Hank Bauer, seven hits and 17 times at bat. Right-handed batter takes strike one in the inside corner. Bauer yesterday saw one of his great records fall by the wayside as he was blanked by Warren Spahn, hitless and four times at bat. Uh, Bauer thus saw his 17-game hitting streak broken in World Series competition. He's batting at 4-12, though, and he swings and lines one foul on the right field line. Strike two. Right-handed batter Hank Bauer with third baseman Jerry Lumpy due to hit next. And then the center fielder Mickey Mantle. Lou Burnett, who beat the Yankees in the second ball game, 13-5. Outfield is playing to the left for Bauer. Standing fairly deep in the batter's box. Swings misses, and he struck him out. Sidearm curveball. Strikeout number one for Lou Burnett. And in baseball superstition, that is supposed to be bad luck. Striking out the leadoff man. So we'll see what develops out here this afternoon. Third baseman, Jerry Lumpy. A left-handed swinger has been up five times. With one hit, has a batting average of 200. Stands fairly close to home plate. Straightaway stands. Chokes up about two inches on the bat handle. Watching the fidgety right-hander, Lou Burdett. Who comes down with the first pitch. A swing and a miss. Strike one. Shane Deinst is playing on the edge of the outfield grass at second base. Torrey is deep at first base. Eddie Matthews about even with the bag at third, while Logan is fairly deep at short. Burnett toying with the bill of his cap, gets his sign from Del Crandall. Lumpy waves the bat across the plate. The pitch he was going to bunt, let it go by. High and outside, it's even at ball one and strike one. 
So far in the four previous games, the attendance total has amounted to 235,896. We've had two great crowds here at Yankee Stadium, over 70,000, and over 46,000 in the first two games at Milwaukee. A 1-1 pitch, and Lumpy swings, drives with a right center field. Billy Bruton streaking over on the run. He made a beautiful running catch of beauty by Billy Bruton. Boy, there was one of the great plays of the series as Bruton came racing into short. Right center field leaned down along the shoe tops and made a catch. And you can see the white of the ball on the fingertips of his glove as he almost dropped it. Highway robbery as far as Lumpy is concerned, and the Yankees, and it's two outs. The batter is center fielder Mickey Mantle. A switch hitter batting left-handed against Luberdat. Mickey has three for 12 in the series, takes ball one outside. A 250 batting average. All three hits have been mighty long blows by Mickey. One triple and two home runs. Three runs batted in. He hit one yesterday off Warren Spahn that hit the scoreboard in deep left center field, well over 400 feet. But he died on third base as Warren Spahn turned in a brilliant performance, a two-hitter. There's a ball. It's outside. Ball two, no strikes. Burnett being very careful with Mickey Mantle on deck is catcher Yogi Berra. No score the last half of the first inning. Already we have seen a sparkling play by the center fielder, Billy Bruton. Great running catch in short right center field. Ball two, no strikes. Here is the wind-up by Burdett. The pitch and Mantle swings, misses, and it's ball two and strike one. Now the Yankee coaches this afternoon, Frank Crosetti at third base, Ralph Hulk at first base. Braves talking up in the infield. Milwaukee hoping to wrap it up this afternoon. The Yankees hoping to keep their chances alive. Here's a foul as Mickey Mantle tried to bunt the ball. Hit behind the plate and it's ball two and strike two. Ball two and a strike two count. Manager Fred Haney has been blessed with great pitching talent on this Milwaukee ball club in the last couple of years. As a matter of fact, in the first four games of the series, he has had to go to his bullpen only once. That was in the third game. He's had three route-going performances, two by Warren Spahn, one ten-inning uh, ten ball game, and the other completed game by the guy who's out there right now, Nitro Luberdet. A swing and a ground foul ball down the right field line, picked up by Frank Torrey. Count remains 2-2 on Mickey Mantle. On the other hand, the Casey Stengel has not had one of his Yankee hurlers go the distance in the series. Although he got some very sharp pitching in the third game, as the Braves were shut out 4-0. On a combined effort by Don Larson and Ryan Doran. Ball two and strike two the count. Mickey Mantle, one of the strongest hitters in baseball, switch hitter. Swinging from the southpaw side with the right-hander Luberdet going into the motion. 2-2 pitch, a swing of this, he struck him out. So Burdett comes up with a second strikeout. And the Yankees are three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And at the end of the first inning, the score is Milwaukee nothing, New York nothing. Hello there, everybody. I'm Mel Allen with a giant offer from Papermate that tops them all. Listen, how would you like a genuine Papermate pen free? How would you like a genuine Papermate refill free? Sound good? Well, that's exactly what you get. Free pen, free refill. When you buy Papermate's famous two-tone pen at the regular $1.69 price. What a bargain. As it says right on the special Papermate display, you get a two-tone pen worth $1.69, plus an extra silver tip refill worth $0.49, cents, plus a retractable schoolmate utility pen worth $0.39. Cents. A two fifty seven value, all three for only $1.69. How about that? A two fifty seven value for only $1.69. Look for the special Papermate display at stores everywhere. Buy your two-tone pen at regular price. Get an extra pen, an extra refill, free from Papermate. The sensational offer is limited. So hurry and get your free Papermate pen and free refill now. Leading off for the Milwaukee Braves in the top half of the second will be their strong left fielder, Wes Covington. Uh, Wes
Watts has had an unusual series with that great power he possesses. He has yet to come up with an extra base hit. He's had four hits and 14 times at bat, batting at 286. Three runs batted in. A left-handed batter facing right-hander Bob Turley. The outfield is playing west around to the right, and the first pitch is a slow curve call strike, a beauty. Strike one. Covington, Torrey, and Crandall to face Turley in the top half of the second. Neither team threatened in the first inning. Yankees have all their chips on the line this afternoon as they trail three games to one. Turley with no wind-up delivers. A curve strike two in about the same spot. And it's a strike two count. Covington that time looked like he was looking for the fastball and was in stride and watched that curveball break. Strike two count. No score. Covington leading off in the second. And there's another curve. This one is outside. It's one and two. Ball one and strike two. Covington out of that batter's box for a second. Steps back in. Looks out at Turley. As the big right-hander looks down at Yogi Berra. And now he steps out of the batter's box as Turley was taking a lot of time. Ball one strike two on West Covington. Bob Turley again has a sign. Here's the one and two pitch. There's a swing and a foul on a slow curve ball. It's still one and two. A ball one and a strike two count. Wes Covington, who was born in Warrenburg, North Carolina, lives during the offseason now in Milwaukee. Here's the one and two pitch. There's a swing and a line shot down the right field line foul. Boy, that ball was really tagged. A liner foul, and it's still one and two on West Covington. Bill Scourin can tell you how hard this guy pulls the ball down that first base line as his wrist is still black and blue from a shot he took off the wrist in the third game of the series. Ball one and a strike two count. Frank Torrey on deck. Here's a swing and a high fly ball left center field. Mickey Mantle going back, drifting back, still backpedaling, and makes the catch for the out. Covington flies to Mantle in center field, and it brings up first baseman Frank Torrey. Torrey's had three hits at 11 times at bat, hitting a 273. One run batted in. He has no extra base hits in the series. Now, last year, he had a home run at Milwaukee and a home run here at Yankee Stadium. And the first pitch is at his feet, bouncing back to the screen, and it's ball one and no strikes. An unusual note last year was that Torrey went all the way through the 1957 National League season without a home run at County Stadium in Milwaukee, but then in the series came through with a big one. Ball one, no strikes. Turley's next pitch curve is low and inside. Ball two, two and nothing. Braves have two very big first basemen. As Adcock stands 6'4, Torrey is 6'3, weighs 205 pounds. 26 years old. Fastball is poured outside, and it's ball three and no strikes. Catcher Del Crandall kneeling down off to the left of the un- of the plate. Just outside the on-deck circle. The wind today is out of the north, blowing in from center field. Ball four. As Turley comes up with his second walk. Puts a Milwaukee Brave on first base with one out. Brings up catcher Del Crandall having a fine series, batting at 333. And doing a really brilliant job behind the plate. He's had five hits and 15 trips. Two runs batted in. No extra base hits. The Braves' power hasn't really exploded too frequently in this series as far as extra base hits are concerned. Here's a curve strike. Strike one count. But Milwaukee has been scoring a lot of runs. 
No ball, one strike count. Runner on first base. One man is out. Pitch to Crandall, and the curve breaks outside. Pike down the first base. Torrey dives back in head first. It's a ball one. Strike one count on Del Crandall. Milwaukee has scored 20 runs to the Yankees' 12 in the first four games. Braves about hit New York 40 to 21. But they trail in home run 6 to 2. Outfield to the left for Del Crandall. Bob Turley checks the runner, delivers. There's a swing of miss. It's ball one and strike two. One and two of the count. No score. Braves batting in the second. A ball one and a strike two count on catcher Del Crandall. Shortstop Johnny Logan follows Del in the batting order. Torrey at first base. The pitch is a strike three and Crandall knew it. He swayed away from a curveball that exploded right over the heart of the plate. And that is strikeout number one for Bob Turley. Crandall is called out on strikes. Two runner out here, shortstop Johnny Logan. Johnny batting at 188, has three hits and 16 trips. Two doubles and two runs batted in. The outfield, around to the left, first pitch is too low. It's ball one and no strikes. Ball one, no strike count. Torrey on first base with two outs. Braves hitters have gone down 32 times now in the series on strikes, while the Yankees, Yankee hitters have struck out 24 times. Here's the one and no pitch. Curve is low and it's ball two, two and nothing. Ball two, no strike count. Turley takes a deep breath, gets his sign from Yogi Berra. Torrey leads off first base with two outs. The 2-0 and pitch is swinging a high foul that's going up from the upper deck behind home plate. It's ball two and strike one. Bob Turley, who was born in Troy, Illinois. He's big at 6'2", 215 pounds, 28 years old. And during the offseason, Bob will go back to Lutherville, Maryland. Ball two and a strike one count on Logan. Looper Dad is due to hit next. Billy Bruton is in the on-deck circle. Frank Torrey leads off first base with two outs. The pitch is swung on, missed like two. And it's even up, ball two and strike two. Yankee Bat Boy moves out with some new baseballs for the home plate umpire, Al Barlick. Ball two and a strike two count. Here is the pitch. And it's strike three. He was pulled on a curveball. Logan is called out on strikes. And for the Braves in the second, no runs, no hits, no errors. One man was left. And the score is Milwaukee nothing, the New York Yankees nothing. The big news of yesterday's game was, of course, Warren Spahn's brilliant two-hit pitching. That performance will be a hard one to top. And here's other news that's hard to beat. Now you can get a Gillette one-piece TV razor for just 79 cents. 79 cents for a Gillette TV razor, plus a dispenser of Gillette Blue Blades and a handy travel case. This offer is good only while the supply lasts. And the way they're selling, better get yours soon. The Gillette TV razor is precisely built all in one piece. Blade changing is simple. A quick rinse cleans the razor. Its double edges save you money on blades, too. Comfort, yes, sir. Gillette TV Razor delivers shaves that are fast and easy that last far longer, make you look and feel your very best. Stop at a nearby store today and pick up your Gillette TV Razor. The price is just 79 cents while they last. the last half of the second for the New York Yankees, Yogi Berra will be leading off. He'll be followed by Elston Howard and then Bill Scourin, facing right-hander Lou Burdett. 
Rivera has now reached a series high for total at-bats with 211 official trips. He broke the existing records in the first game of the series when his four times up moved him from 196 to uh, 200, passing Frankie Frisch's 197 and Joe DiMaggio's 199. Yogi Berra. In this series, he has two for 15, batting a 133, one double. Left-handed batter facing Lou Burdett, who for the first time in his major league career this past season came up with 20 victories in the campaign. There is strike one on the outside corner. Well, it seems to be warming up here at Yankee Stadium. It's up to 52 degrees now from 51. Nobody on base and nobody out. Yankees batting in the second. No score. Lieutenant batter Yogi Berra levels the bat across the plate watching Burdett as Lou kicks the leg and delivers and it's a breaking pitch outside. Ball one and strike one. Ball one and strike one. As we mentioned last Thursday at Milwaukee County Stadium with Burdett on the mound, he continually is talking to the hitter at 79 and to his infielders and sometimes we'll look up into the upper deck of the stadium and seem to be talking to the crowd. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Swung on a hard hit ball. Stabbed by Torrey. The throw to Burdett. In time and a beautiful play. by Torrey to Lou Burdett. And Milwaukee continues to steal the spotlight defensively as Torrey, far to his right, went down on his knees, grabbed that ball on his gloved hand side, whirled and threw to Lou Burdett. And Lou just looked over at Torrey and said, nice going, Frank. So that's one out. And it brings up the left fielder, Elston Howard. Howard, who is looking for his first World Series base hit, 0 for 7. Right-handed batter. Close stance, holds his bat right on the end. Lobert at wheels and deals. The pitch is in the dirt. It's ball one and no strikes. Neither team has managed to come up with a base hit as yet. Although the Yankees have given it a real try, but Billy Bruton and Frank Torrey have made great plays, robbing Jerry Lumpy and Yogi Berra. Ball one, no strike count. Crandall throws a new baseball out to Burdett. Outfield is playing Elston Howard deep and towards left field. Burdett into the motion. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Howard swings and hits one foul into the woo down the right field line into the stands. Hit a post line foul and it's ball one and strike one. Umpire Al Bonick calls a time and dusts off home plate. Ball one, strike one count. On deck is first baseman Bill Scourin. Burdett starts his motion. Comes down with a 1-1 pitch, a swing and a drive, and a right center field. Henry Aaron's on the run, going back towards the wall. He makes a fine running catch, and it's two away. Elston Howard hit one of the nose that time in a deep right center field. Henry Aaron off with a crack of the back, went back and reached up and grabbed that ball. And it's two outs in the last half of the second. Another fine defensive play by Milwaukee, and it's two outs, bringing up first baseman Bill Scourin. Scourin, three for 15, batting 200. One home run and one RBI. Another strong Yankee hitter, right-handed batter. First pitch is in there for a call strike one. Lou Burdett here in one and two-thirds innings has been given some sterling support by his teammates. No ball, one strike count. Here is the motion by Burdett. His next pitch is cut on. There's a foul up to the right going up into the upper deck, and it's strike two. Strike two on Scourin. Bill will be followed by second baseman Gil McDougald. Burdett looks over the baseball. Goes through his many motions, reaches down, has the rosin sack, flips it down. Right-handed batter Bill Scourin waiting. The pitch is swung on. There's a ground ball to the shortstop. Logan over, picks it up. Here's Johnny Thorne at first base. He is out of there by a step. 
retiring the side. In the last half of the second, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And at the end of the second, the score is Milwaukee nothing, the Yankees nothing. second base while Torrey died on first. So it'll be Lou Burdett leading off against Bob Turley. Lou who cracked a three-run home run in the second ball game. Swings misses. That's strike one. And that was the first home run hit by a pitcher in a World Series since back in 1940 when Bucky Walters, one time Braves pitching coach, hit one out for Cincinnati. Burdett, Bruton, and Shane Deans to face Bob Turley in the top half of the third. No score. Here's a swing on this, and it's strike two. Strike two count. Mickey Mantle is straight away in center field and not too deep. Bob Turley has his sign, and the pitch is a curve outside, one and two. Bob looks like he's got a very fine curveball working for him today, along with that good speed. Ball one and strike two. He delivers, and a swing of miss, he struck him out. So three strikeouts in a row for Turley. He struck out Crandall and Logan in the second. Now gets Burdett here leading off in the third. And it brings up the center fielder, Billy Bruton. Billy, one of the two base runners for Milwaukee, drew a walk as a leadoff man of the first inning. Moved to second base on a sacrifice by Shane Deans, but remained there as Matthews and Aaron fly out. Here is strike one. Curveball on the inside corner belt high. Outfield is playing around to the right. Turley's next pitch is swung on a high foul going up into the third deck at Yankee Stadium. First base side, and it's strike two. These two teams have traded shutouts in the last two ball games as Don Larson and Ryan Duran combined to beat Bob Rush 4 to nothing in the third game. And yesterday, Warren Spahn defeated Whitey Ford 3 nothing as Spahn allowed only two hits. The 0-2 pitch swung on and fouled back on the screen, and it's still strike two on Bruton. Billy, who is still batting at 444 with four for nine, was given a free ride by Turley in the first inning. Now Turley works on the baseball. Well built for a pitcher. Bob goes 205 pounds. Now as he has a sign from Barra. 0-2 pitch, curve, a swing and a miss. He struck him out on that four straight strikeout for Bob Turley. And Yankee fans who were hoping that Mr. Turley would be on this afternoon are kind of sitting back a little bit now and relaxing because Bob Turley has been pitching really sharp baseball. Four consecutive strikeouts. Two outs, nobody on base. Here is the second baseman, Red Shane Deans. Red sacrificed his first time up, and he takes a strike. Turley got his fastball on the outside corner, knee high. Strike one counts. No score. Braves batting in the third. Bob Turley nods. He has a sign. The pitch is a fastball, and that ball was humming in there. It's high and outside. Ball one and strike one. Clear blue skies in New York City. The wind blowing from the north is moving in from center field down towards home plate. 
curve is in there for a call strike. Shady thought it was too high. He's out of the batter's box now, talking to Al Barley. Ball one and strike two. Turley out in front. Red batting left-handed. Swings. It's a line drive down the right field line. This is a foul ball. A liner foul. Count remaining at ball one and strike two on Shane Deans. Ball one and strike two. Red gets back in the batter's box. Two outs and nobody on base. There's a swing and a line drive in the center field for a base hit. Shane Deans comes up with the first base hit of the ball game. A sizzling line drive to center field. Puts a runner on first base with two outs and it brings up third baseman Eddie Matthews. Eddie flied out to right field in the first inning. Lieutenant batter stepping in against the right-hander Turley. Shane Dean's on first base and two outs. Milwaukee comes up with his third base runner. The first pitch to Matthews. A swing and a miss. Strike one. Strike one counts. On deck, Henry Aaron. The first uh, two games here at Yankee Stadium, games three and four, started out very slowly as far as runs. And this one has that kind of an indication also. Here's a curve that's slow to Matthews. It's even up at ball one and strike one. Ball one, strike one count on Eddie Matthews. Bob Turley had four consecutive strikeouts, and thumbing through the record book, we find that the most consecutive strikeouts in a World Series game is six, held by Horace Eller of Cincinnati back in 1919. There is a ball at slow, and it's ball two. Ball two and strike one. So Bob Turley, who had strikeouts against Crandall, Logan, Burdett, and Bruton, fell too short of tying a series mark. Scourin holding Shane Dean Stahn at first base with two outs. Turley's 2-1 pitch, and strike two is called as Turley found that outside corner with his fastball belt high, and it's ball two and strike two. Ball two and a strike two count. Another wonderful crowd jammed into Yankee Stadium. Turley has a sign. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Spike three. Matthews is called out. On a fastball on the knees on the inside corner. Spike on number five for Turley. No runs, one hit, no errors. One man was left on base. And the score remains Milwaukee nothing. And the New York Yankees nothing. Well, we've had only one stolen base in this series so far, but here's a steal that everyone can get it on if you move fast. The Gillette World Series special for just 79 cents. Yes, sir, here it is. A Gillette TV razor, a dispenser of those smooth shaving Gillette blue blades and smart styrene travel case, a regular $1 value for just 79 cents. You men who shave with an obsolete razor, or you fellows who are just starting to shave, now's the time to get a modern Gillette TV razor. Its one-piece construction gives you instant blade changing and cleaning. The double edges save you time and money, and the shaves you get are clean, refreshing, wonderfully comfortable. At the low price of just 79 cents, the Gillette TV razor is selling fast. Better get yours today, and be sure you don't miss out. In the last half of the third... Gil McDougal will lead off for the Yankees. And by the way, when Matthews took that third strike in the uh, third inning, it marked the ninth time in the series Matthews has struck out. The World Series record for strikeouts by an individual is 10 in a seven-game series. And Matthews has nine. The record for a five-game series previous was held by Hornsby and Snyder. Eight strikeouts in five ball games. 
Joe McDougal. Leading off a right-handed batter, hitting a 214. Gill has three base hits. He's been up 14 times. No extra base hits, no runs batted in. Last time of the third, no score. Lou Burdett. Ready to bear down on the Yankee second baseman. Red Shandienst is moving Aaron a couple of steps to his right in right field. Burdett starts his delivery and the pitch is too low and that's ball one. Ball one and no strikes. Burdett has a brilliant earned run average in World Series competition. 1.50 in four victories over the Yankees. And by the way, another oddity about Lou Burdett is the fact that in his four wins, in all four games against the Yankees, three last year and one this year, he has allowed seven hits. 1-0 pitch. It's too low. McDougal was going to swing. He held up. Ball two and no strikes. Good sinker pitch. Burdett has a natural sinker coming from the side. And now McDougal asks... Marlick to look over the baseball, which Al does, and throws a new ball into the game. And this one is being tossed out. Boy, these Major League ball players have really sharp eyesight. McDougal noticed something wrong with that ball as it passed him and called Al Marlick's attention to it. Here's a drive back of the left field, back towards the wall. It may be. It is a home run for Gil McDougal. that was precariously close to being a foul ball as it hit the foul pole in left field. A mighty smash. And the Yankees take a one to nothing lead. Hit number one off Luberdet. And that for New York is its seventh home run of the series compared to Milwaukee's two. Yankees one, Milwaukee nothing. Home run by Gil McDougal. And the pitch to Tony Kubek. A swing on this and that's like one. Tony Kubek, who has no hits. In 13 times at bat. Looking for his first base out of the 58 series. A left-handed batter. Here is the wind-up fiber depth. The next pitch, he tries to bunt, missed the ball, it's strike two. For McDougal, that was his sixth home run in World Series competition. Nobody on base. Nobody out, and one run is across the plate. Tony Kubek, the batter. Bob Turley due to hit next, and Turley will be followed by the leadoff man, right fielder Hank Bauer. The Yankees leading 1 0. And that was their first base hit off for Dutt. Blue comes down with the 0 2 pitch, and it's outside. Ball one and strike two. High towering drive that was hooking and hit the foul pole in left field. Hank Bauer beat Milwaukee last year in the sixth game of the series with a line shot that hit the foul pole as the Yankees edged Milwaukee three to two. Burdett turning around, looking out at his right fielder, Henry Aaron. Comes down with a one-two pitch. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. And Tony Kubek moves back towards the Yankee dugout. That strikeout is number three for Burdett. Getting a nice hand as he moves up towards the plate. Charlie didn't get a chance to hit in the second ball game as he worked only one third of an inning. On the season, he batted 136. Had two homers. And six runs batted in. Right-handed swinger, and he takes the first pitch in there for a call strike one. ball, one strike count. One out. Nobody on base. Yankees out in front, one to nothing on Gil McDougal's first home run of the series. Here's a swing of the ground ball to the uh, second baseman, Shandy. Scoops it up over to first base. He is out, and that's two away. 
So we move on to the top of the New York batting order. Right fielder Hank Bauer, who struck out of the first inning. Hank Bauer, a right-handed batter, with the outfield moving deep and around towards left. The wind up by Burdett. Here is the pitch, and it's too low a ball. Ball one and no strikes. Lou Burdett, last year, came back with only two days rest to work in the seventh game of the series and shut out the New York Yankees 5 nothing. Ball one and no strikes. Hank Bauer waits. The pitch cut on a ground ball to the shortstop. Left Logan over. Has the ball to throw to first base. He is out. And after the home run, it's three up and three down. In the last half of the third, one run on one hit. No errors. Nobody left on base. And at the end of the third inning, the score is the Yankees one. The Braves nothing. Hey, don't tell everybody. Can you buy custom it only has a limited supply of Gillette TV razors. Take this price just 79 cents, so take this advice. Shh. And hurry, hurry, hurry. Get one fast in your Gillette TV razor while they last. Henry Aaron leads off for Milwaukee in the fourth inning, and Aaron will be followed by West Covington and then Frank Torrey. Milwaukee trails New York one to nothing. And incidentally, when Gil MacDougall, the homered off Burdett in the last half of the third, and marked the first time in 17 consecutive innings that the Yankees have been able to score a run off Burdett at Yankee Stadium. Aaron, right-handed batter, swings. It's a high fly ball, deep left center field. Elston Howard backing up is waiting for it now, and he's there to make the catch, and that's one out. Aaron, who had fly to Mantle his first time up, Hits Charlie's first pitch to Howard in fairly deep left field, and that's one away. Batter is left fielder Wes Covington walking up to its home plate. Wes flied out to Mickey Mantle in center field in the second. Milwaukee has only one base hit off Turley. That was a single by Shane Deans in the third. The Yankees have only one hit off Burdett, but that was a home run by McDougal in the third. So it is New York 1, Milwaukee nothing in the fifth game of the series. West Covington, left-handed batter, and Turley's first pitch is a fast strike right down the alley. Strike one. Now he's changed his pitching style against uh, Covington, his pattern of pitching, because the first two pitches in the second were slow breaking curveballs. This was a fastball. Curve, a swing and a miss, and a strike two. That was a sharp breaking curveball down at the knees. One man is out and nobody on base. West Covington in the batter's box and Frank Torrey on deck. Bob Turley's next pitch. Swung on and grounded foul. Bouncing into the box seats on the first base side. And the count remains at strike two. Strike two count on West Covington. Strong left-handed batter who hit 24 home runs for the Braves in 90 ball games. 0-2 pitch. A curveball breaks at his legs and he goes down in a hurry trying to get out of the way with that bad left leg protecting his left knee and he just fell down to the ground on a curveball blowing inside and it's ball one and strike two. Covington had himself quite a year with 97 base hits, 75 runs batted in, hitting at 330 for the Braves. Lieutenant batter, the one and two pitch. Strike three, he is called out on our beauty, and he was fooled. Strike out number six for Turley. Turley sailing right along, 
Young has six strikeouts. And now here is Frank Torrey, who walked in the second. A left-handed batter. Here is the first pitch, and a curveball is high. It's ball one and no strikes. So Milwaukee hitters now have struck out a total of 37 times in the series. Here's the one and old pitch. Curveball, a strike is called, and it's even up on Frank Torrey at ball one and strike one. Torrey with three hits and 11 times at bat. Batting at uh, 273. Up here with two outs. Nobody on base, and the Yankees leading one to nothing. A swing and a ground ball to the first baseman. Scourin picks it up, beats it to the bag, and that retires the side. Milwaukee three up and three down to the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And the score remains. The Yankees won. Milwaukee nothing. All series long, the feeling of Red Sandings has been brilliant. But that play he made off Yogi Berry yesterday really made the news. And the news from Gillette is that you fans are going all out for this year's World Series special, the Gillette One Piece TV Razor for just 79 cents. And no wonder, your 79 cents buy the shaving bargain of the year, a Gillette TV Razor, a dispenser of Gillette Blue Blades, and a good-looking travel case. At that low, low price, here's a value that won't last long. You get peak shaving comfort, clean, comfortable shaves that make you feel refreshed and look your best for hours and hours. Made in one piece, the Gillette TV Razor is a marvel of convenience. Blade changing and cleaning is a snap. And those double edges save you money on blades. So stop at your nearby store and pick up your Gillette TV Razor, complete with a dispenser of Gillette Blue Blades and handsome travel case, a regular $1 value. It costs just 79 cents. Well, we have a low-hit ball game out here today. Each team has just one hit, but the Yankees, who have out-homered the Braves 7-2, found the range with Gil McDougal hitting one off the foul pole in the third for the only base hit off for death, but good enough for a one nothing lead. Now Jerry Lumpy leads off for the Yankees in the last half of the fourth inning. Lumpy, Mantle, and Barra. Burdett starts his motion, and the pitch to Jerry Lumpy is high inside. It's ball one. Lumpy was robbed of a base hit on the first inning when he hit a fly ball into right center field. It looked like it was going to be in for a base hit. Bruton came streaking across the outfield, made a brilliant catch down around his knees on in the full run for a great play. Ball one, no strikes on Jerry Lumpy. Kneeling down in the on-deck circle, Mickey Mantle. Burnett starts and comes down with the next pitcher. a strike on the outside corner above the knees. It's even at one and one. Ball one, strike one. Most of the ball players today in the dugouts have those heavy warm-up jackets on because it is rather cool here at Yankee Stadium with a temperature at 52 degrees. Turned cold in New York City last night. Ball one and strike one the count on Jerry Lumpy, Yankee third baseman. He swings, hits one off the plate. Burnett coming over. It's a foul ball. On the first base side, it's ball one and strike two. Ball one and strike two. Well, a couple of fans have raced out on the playing field with some kind of a banner, and here come the policemen out. They have a banner out here, and it went across the back of first base coach Ralph Houck. Three fans are out around second base in front of Red Sandings. And the policemen now have moved out here and are trying to get these fans off the playing field. They're trying to stretch out a banner, and they just won't give up. Finally, another placement. Here comes two more placement out to help out, and now these fans are being escorted off the playing field. It's a ball one and a strike two count on Jerry Lumpy. No 
Street fellas might not enjoy any more of this ball game at the park. One and two. Nobody on base, nobody out. Yankees batting, last half of the fourth. The New York leads Milwaukee. One to nothing as Burnett delivers. There's a ground ball out behind second base. It is knocked down, but it's in for a base hit. Knocked down by Shane Deans. Uh, Shane Deans and Logan crisscrossed out behind the bag. Hit number two off Blue Burnett. Mike Chopper over the mound. Puts a runner on first base. Nobody is out. Brings up the center fielder, Mickey Mantle. Mantle struck out in the first inning. Lumpy on first base. As the Yankees come up with their second base runner off Luber Dutch. On an infield hit by Jerry. And the pitch to Mickey Mantle is outside. Ball one and no strikes. Mickey batting left-handed against the right-hander Burdett. Has had three hits and 13 times at bat. But on all three hits, he showed his tremendous power with two homers and a triple. Lumpy holding on at first base. Now moves off as Burdett goes into the stretch. Steps back off the rubber as he watched Jerry Lumpy take the lead. And Lou goes to work on the baseball. Very nervous looking right hander, although he is very cool when he's working out there in the mound. Just fidgets a lot and tries to throw these hitters off stride by as many, many motions. Ball one, no strikes. The pitch is swung on a ground ball in the right field for base hit. Jerry Lumpy digging around second base is going to hold up now as Aaron fires into St. Deans, picked up by Logan. Mickey Mantle hits one to right field for a base hit. That puts runners on first and second base with nobody out. And Juan Pizarro is going to begin loosening up for Milwaukee. Left-hander Juan Pizarro is going to work in the bullpen in deep left center field as the Yankees have back-to-back -back singles leading off in the fourth inning. But now they have Jerry Lumpy on second base. Mickey Mantle on first base. And the batter is catcher Yogi Berra. Berra robbed of the base hit by Frank Torrey in a fielding, great fielding play in the second. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a hard at ball. Stand by Matthews. Steps on third out. Over to first base. A high throw. He is out on a very close play. Beautiful catch by both Eddie Matthews and Frank Torrey. Hard smash. Matthews knocked the ball down. Picked it up. Stepped on third base. Got the runner going in the third and fired a high throw across the infield. Torrey leaping high. Came down with the baseball on the bag. And it's a double play. And a big double play here at Yankee Stadium. That is Milwaukee's third double play. In the series... Boy, that Eddie Matthews at third base has great reactions. He is quick. Quick reflexes. That was a hard smash to his left. He knocked the ball down, picked it up, stepped on third base, fired across the infield. And there was another fine play by Frank Torrey. Two men are out. Mickey Mantle on second base. And here's the pitch to Howard. A swing and a drive. Deep right center field. Bruton back tapping is there. He makes the catch to retire the side. And Burnett works himself out of a jam. No run, two hits, no errors, one man was left on base. And at the end of the fourth inning, the score is the Yankees won, the Braves nothing. Hello there, everybody. I'm Mel Allen with a giant offer from Papermate that tops them all. Listen, how'd you like a genuine Papermate pen free? How'd you like a genuine Papermate refill free? Sound good? Well, that's exactly what you get. Free pen, free refill. When you buy Papermate's famous two-tone pen at the regular $1.69 price. What a bargain. As it says right on the special Papermate display, you get a two-tone pen worth $1.69, plus an extra silver tip refill worth $0.49, cents, plus a retractable schoolmate utility pen worth $0.39. Cents. A two fifty seven value, all three for only $1.69. How about that? A two fifty seven value for only $1.69.
Look for the special paper mate display at stores everywhere. Buy your two-tone pen at regular price. Get an extra pen, an extra refill, free from paper mate. This sensational offer is limited. So hurry and get your free paper mate pen and free refill now. Four inning totals. The Yankees, one run, three hits, no errors. Milwaukee, no runs, one hit and no errors. In the top half of the fifth inning, Crandall, Logan, and Burdett will face Bob Turley. And he's been pitching a beauty. One base hit, a single by Shane Deans in the third. Giving up two walks, and he has six strikeouts. Bob Turley, no wind-up, fires, curves, strike call on Crandall. Crandall was called out on strikes in the second. Nobody on base and nobody out. Braves batting in the fifth inning. They need one to tie and two to take the lead. The pitch is blown inside. Another curveball. that back Crandall out of the batter's box, and it's ball one and strike one. Ball one, strike one counts. Bob Turley, who appears to really have his stuff out here at Yankee Stadium this afternoon, delivers a swing and a hard hit ball. One hop to Jerry Lumpy across the infield. Crandall's out, and that is one away. Lumpy to Bill Scourin. One out on the fifth inning. Brings up shortstop Johnny Logan. Logan was called out on strikes in the second inning. At one time, Turley came up with four consecutive strikeouts. Crandall, Logan, Burdett, and Bruton. And he had five strikeouts out of six hitters. Pitch is too low to John. Right-handed batter Johnny Logan. All one, no strikes. Here is the delivery. Curveball strike call. It's one and one. The Yankees putting up a brilliant battle here in the fifth game because this is it. If Milwaukee wins, it's all over. If the Yankees win, back to Milwaukee County Stadium. Fastball. A strike on the outside corner ladder high. Blazing pitch. Ball one and strike two. Bob Turley has really had these Milwaukee hitters off stride with his good fastball, but that... Great curveball he possesses today has really had these hitters wondering what's coming. Paper made pit. One and two pitch. A swing and a foul. Back behind the plate on the screen, and it's ball one, strike two. Braves have had just one hit. A single by Shane Deans in the third. Turley nods, he has his sign, delivers, and a swing and a ground foul, hit down the third baseline, knocked down by Jerry Lumpy, and the count on Logan is still, ball one and strike two. The Yankees, one run on three hits, a run scoring on Gil McDougal's first home run of the series, and his sixth home run in World Series competition. Came in the third inning, a long drive that hit against the foul pole in left field. Actually hit on the screen that is hooked right onto that foul pole. Here's a foul back onto the screen behind home plate as Logan reached out for the curveball, spoiling it. Just got a piece of it, and it's still one and two on Johnny. One man is out. Nobody on base. Milwaukee has not threatened seriously off Bob Turley as yet. One and two pitch. There's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. And that's strike count number seven for Turley. Second time that Logan has taken a long walk back to the Milwaukee dugout. And it brings up pitcher Lou Burdett. Lou Burdett struck out on the third. Seven strikeouts for Bob Turley. In four and two-thirds innings. So far, the series high has been eight in this series. Fastball is outside, ball one. And the fellow who owns the World Series record for most strikeouts in a ball game, Carl Erskine of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Erskine uh, struck out 14 Yankees October the 2nd, 1953. Turley's next pitch is swung on. A fly ball to left center field. 
Going back on the ball and still going back is Elston Howard. He makes the catch deep left center field to retire the side. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And the score is New York 1, Milwaukee nothing. Every day is Gillette Foamy. It's the Jet Speed Instant Leather. A touch of the nozzle releases billowy snow white leather. Leather so rich, so full bodied, that a little goes a long way. And Gillette Foamy contains K34, the exclusive antiseptic that kills harmful bacteria while you shave. Now you can get cool, refreshing menthol foamy or regular foamy. Either type, regular or menthol cool, costs just 79 cents. And that gets you a supply that lasts for three months. Ask for Gillette Foamy at a nearby store. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Yankees lead 1-0 as we move on to the last half of the fifth inning. And a man who has had the privilege of broadcasting many of our top sports events in the nation always does a bang-up job from the nation's capital, Bob Wolf. Thank you, Earl Gillespie. Good afternoon again, everybody. Bill Scourin will lead off for the New York Yankees in the bottom half of the fifth inning. The score of the ball game here in New York, the Yankees won the Milwaukee Braves nothing. So far this afternoon, the Yankee home run power has manifested itself against the Braves and against Lou Burdett. Ten of the 13 runs for the Yankees in this series have been the result of homers. And the last five Yankee runs off Burdett, including his stint at Milwaukee, have come off homers. This afternoon, a home run has provided the only score. That was McDougal's homer in the third. And Gill will be the second man up for New York in the bottom half of the spin. Bill Scarrow to ground it out, and the second steps in. We're all set to go. Here's Burdett's pitch. And there's a foul back for strike one. There have been three hits so far for the Yankees, including singles by Lumpy and Mantle. Bill Scarrett up there at the plate, and the outfield is playing him straight away in all fields. Burdett, back off the mound, rubs up the ball for the moment. Now has the uh, glove back on, goes to the rosin bag, and we're all set to go as Burdett gets the sign from Crandall. Scourin with a one-strike count waiting. Here's the windup, and the pitch on the way is a curveball. There's a long fly at left center field. Covington's going for it, so is Bruton, and Covington makes the catch. Scourin is out number one in the bottom half of the fifth inning. And here is Gil McDougall getting a hand as he comes up. As Earl described, McDougall hit one which hit up against the uh, foul pole screen and left for the Yankee homer. It was a high inside pitch that McDougall pulled. And he got good wood on the ball. He's up now for the second time. He's accounted for the only run so far of the ball game. Burdett winds. The pitch to Gill is inside for ball one. Score one nothing. the Yankees. And this is the uh, bottom half of the fifth inning. This is the game that if Milwaukee takes it, they win the World Series. The Yankees need it to stay alive and force the series to go back to Milwaukee. McDougal waiting with a ball one count. Burdett already goes into the windup. Here's the right-handed pitch. And there's a high hopper to the third baseman, Matthews. He takes the hop, fires to first, pull the out. Matthews to Torrey on a close play as that ball hopped fairly high. So there are two outs in the bottom half of the fifth inning. The batter now is Tony Kubek, who struck out in the third. Lou Burnett, again back off the mound. He's 6'2", 190 pounds, 31 years old. And is famed as the man who tames the Yankees. He has four in a row over New York, including the last series and this one. And has become the third World Series pitcher to do same. There's a called strike to Kubek. Strike one with two away in the bottom half of the fifth. Three World Series pitches have beaten the same foe four times in a row. 
So if Burdett wins this afternoon's ball game, he can set a new record in that department. Strike one to Kubek. Two outs, bottom half of the fifth. Here comes the pitch. Kubek swings. There's a dribbler in front of the plate. It's fielded by Burdett. He throws to first too late. Tony Kubek topped one, which rolled out there in front of the plate and rolled out, I'd say, about a third of the way out to the mound. Del Crandall went racing out to pick it up, but Burdett, who always comes in fast off the mound, raced in, picked up the ball, and is through to first base was just a mite too late to get Kubek, who was on with his first hit of the series. And that brings up the pitcher, Bob Turley, who grounded out in the third. Tony Kubek on first, beating out a dribbler, which rolled out partway toward the mound. He is on first, two away, bottom half of the fifth, and Turley is in and waiting. As a look to the runner, the pitch, Turley swings and misses for strike one. Bob grounded out in the third inning. That hit by Kubek is the fourth for the Yankees. Burdett back to the rosin bag. Now he's ready. The outfield is not too deep for Turley, although on occasion he can get good wood on the ball. Stretch on the pause by the right-hander. Here's the pitch. And there's a grounder going out to Logan. He makes the throw to first base for the out. Johnny was brought in a bit for that one, so through to first to get Turley and retire the side. And in this bottom half of the fifth inning, no runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. The score at the end of five. Yankees won, Braves nothing. Today, more than ever before, Uncle Sam needs muscle. Plenty of muscle. It's the duty of all of us to pitch in and help. One of the best ways is systematic saving through United States Savings Bonds. Uncle Sam's dependable right arm. It's such an easy, painless way to build a secure future for yourself. Just have your employer set aside an amount each payday for Series E Savings Bonds or invest in them direct at your local bank to get more return for your money. Three and a quarter percent compounded semi-annually. And Savings Bonds mature quicker these days. Only eight years and 11 months. Build a financially strong America. A strong personal future for yourself. Start investing in the USA through Series E savings bonds. Let's pause 30 seconds for station identification. The yellow label is your only guarantee of getting real Vichy. Saratoga Vichy. If you want real Vichy, get the yellow label. Yellow label. Yellow label. Yellow label. Yellow label. Insist on the famous yellow label that says Saratoga Vichy, WGY Schenectady. The exciting 59 Ramblers are even more glamorous. American big car room, European small car economy. Take a Rambler ride at Cummings Motors, 1040 State Street, Schenectady. The sixth inning of the World Series. Here is Bill Bruton leading off against Bob Turley. Turley has shown magnificent form this afternoon. Bob uses a combination punch of a good fastball and a sharp breaking curve. But one without the other doesn't do the job. And today, uh, Bob has both. Here's the pitch. And there's a hard shot which skips over the head of Kubek in a center field. It's a base hit for Bruton, who sent a low liner, which hit in front of the shortstop, bounded about 20 feet up in the air, over Kubek's head, and out there into short left center. So Bruton is on with a leadoff single. A hard hit low liner, which hopped over the shortstop's head. That brings up Red Shandings to a sacrifice to the single, and his single was the first hit off Turley, who now has given up two. Shandings swings. as a fly ball to short left. Howard is coming in, racing. He dives. He's got it. There's a throw to first base. It's blocked by McDougal, picked up by Scarlett. The tag is made on Bruton. A double play. What a play. Look at this crowd. fly ball to short left. Howard came in, made a diving catch. We had to wait for the umpire's decision to see whether or not 
He was able to get that ball up off the shoe tops. He did. And with Bruton off the way down a second, Howard came up on his feet, threw back to first. The ball was off McDougal's glove. It was picked up by uh, Scourin right behind him. And uh, then Bruton, who was still trying to come back, was tagged out. Eddie Matthews up there now, and it's strike one. And there's ball one. One and one. So, a tremendous double play. One and one to Matthews. Here's the pitch, and it comes in low. Two balls, strike one. A great grab by Elston Howard, and a quick uh, recovery as he got to his feet. Bruton was just about at second. He was racing to get back, and Howard's throw was stopped first by McDougal as he was between uh, first and second on the baseline, but it was off McDougal's glove. Scarron picked it up and made the tag on Bruton coming back to the bag. There's ball three, strike one now to Matthews. Two away, we're in the top of the sixth, and the score Yankees, one of the Milwaukee Braves, nothing. And this afternoon, we have seen some scintillating defensive plays on both sides. Here's the pitch, and there goes a high fly ball to right field, to steer the line. Bauer is going back, he's deep in the right field corner, the ball is curving, it is foul. About ten feet or so outside the foul ball along the right field line. As Matthews pulled one, foul. And that brought the crowd up. It's now three and two to Matthews. There's a hard hit ball in the hole to right field. Matthews is on with a single to right. In between McDougal and Scarum. So Matthews is on first base. That brings up Hank Aram, who is flat out to center and flat out to left. Matthews on first, two away in the sixth inning. And Aaron, the number four batter for the Milwaukee Braves, stepping in to face Bob Turley, who now has yielded three hits altogether. There's the stretch and the pause by Turley. A look toward first, the pitch, and it's a curveball for a call strike. Turley is really breaking those curves off this afternoon. The uh, Milwaukee batters can't stand in there quite as strong as they might otherwise. He sets him up with the fastball. The curve comes in. You see him lean back just a bit on occasion. All set to go. Aaron waiting. Here's the pitch. Another curve is over for Paul strike two. His strike two, Hank Aaron, who now steps out to get some dirt. Aaron pauses just a moment before getting back in. Matthews on first, draws a look from Turley. Here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss on a curveball, and Aaron is out. He puts the bat off to the side on the strikeout. So, on this top of the sixth inning, the total show. No runs. There were two hits, no errors, and one left. Great hand as Elston Howard comes in to score after the top half of the sixth inning. Yankees one, Braves nothing. Paul, Hi, here's one of the great managers in baseball, Paul Richards, manager of the Baltimore Orioles. Paul, how about that play? That double play, Bob, was quite a play. Howard comes in and actually dives and slides along on the ground, and the ball is underneath his uh, stomach or chest, and he still held on to it, got up, and of course it's an easy double play if he holds the ball, but the play was holding on to it, sliding along the ground, which he did. How about the pitching in this series, Paul? Well, uh, both sides have had terrific pitching. Uh, Bob, uh, you take Whitey Ford yesterday, pitched a wonderful game. However, it was lost in the fact that Warren Spahn did such a marvelous job. And these two guys today are really pitching good ball. And they have the hitters kind of upset. And they're certainly setting them up good for their breaking balls. And uh, it's going to be a low-score game, I'm sure. With all the traveling you do, I'm sure you could use an extra razor. Here's a new Gillette. Well, thank you, Bob. That's my razor, all right. I've been using a Gillette for years. Now.
now's the time for everyone to get an extra Gillette. As a World Series special, the Gillette One Piece TV Razor costs just 79 cents. And that includes a dispenser of Gillette Blue Blades and a handy travel case. It's a $1 value. Get yours while the supply lasts. And thanks, Paul Richards. Thank you, Bob. Here now is the bottom half of the sixth inning. And Hank Bauer comes up. Hank is struck out and he's grounded out. He's up there with the score, New York 1 and Milwaukee nothing. Lou Burnett all set to work after going to the rosin bag. Bauer lumpy mantle for the Yankees in the sixth. Here's the windup. And Lou's first pitch is chopped foul off to the right for strike one. Bauer took a half swing that time, chopped the ball foul, strike one. Hank has been just outstanding in the series for the Yankees. Steps back in, wears that big number nine in his uniform. The outfield is playing Bauer straight away. Here's the windup, and Burdett's pitch on the way is swung on. It's a grounder, which is in the left field for a hit. Matthews moved quickly to his left that time. Logan cut to his right, but it was in between them. And Bauer, who had a series streak snapped yesterday, apparently is trying to start a new one and has got his first hit this afternoon. So that was a grounder, which was in the hole to left. And the Yankees have the leadoff man on base in the bottom half of the sixth inning. As Jerry Luffy, who flied out deep to Bruton on a tremendous catch by Bruton in right center in the first inning. And then had an infield hit in the fourth. Comes up again. Bruton's uh, catch on Luffy was a magnificent play. Bill came streaking into a right center and just barely got the ball on the top of his glove. Bauer on first. Here's the pitch. And a punt is missed. Four strike. One, two, Luffy. On deck, the feared Mickey Mantle. Yankees lead 1-0. They have five hits. The Milwaukee Braves have three. In this do-or-die game for New York. Lumpy, a left-handed batter, and Matthews, the third baseman, is playing now in a line with the bag at third. Logan and Shane Deans to double play depth. Torrey keeping Bauer close at first. There's a look toward the runner. The pitch, a punt, and it rolls foul outside the first baseline for strike two. So with a two-strike count, let's see what the Yankee strategy will be now. With Bauer on first. Nobody out, bottom half of the sixth inning. And so far, the only score this afternoon has been... A home run by Gil McDougald to lead off the third. Now Lumpy back in and waiting with a two-strike count. Matthews has gone just about a foot deeper at third base. There's a look to it first where Bauer takes his lead. And here's Burdett's pitch. It's footed. Foul. And that will be off for Lumpy on a strikeout. Lumpy with a two-strike count. Footed. The pitch was coming in uh, fairly high, was back foul, well behind the plate. So credit for that. Well, they strike out. And that will bring up Mickey Mantle. That's strikeout number four for Burnett. Mantle has struck out, and he has singled to right. His single skipped through the hole in the fourth inning. There's a look toward the runner, and the pitch to Mickey is wide for ball one. Ball one to Mantle. Bauer on first, one away, bottom half of the sixth inning. And the plays this afternoon have thrilled this large crowd. There have been some brilliant maneuvers by each side. And another tight pitching duel going on between Burdett and Turley. Mantle waits, ball one the count, the pitch. Swung on, there's a ground foul outside of first. Taken by the first base coach, Ralph Hout. Hank Bauer, the runner. Hank is a lot of rooters. Uh, not only Yankee partisans, but also in his family. Hank is his own family. He is one of nine. And his brother has 13. So there are a lot of Bowers throughout the USA who are following his progress closely. All set to go. One and one to Mantle. The pitch swung on. There's a fly ball to left center. Bruton is racing in. So is Covington. It falls in there for a hit. Bowers on the way to third. In he goes, standing up. Mantle is on first with a base hit in the short left center field. And they'll 
the action again as Juan Pizarro starts warming up for Milwaukee. Mickey Mantle with the outfield playing deep. Lifted one into short left center. Bruton came streaking in. Covington came racing over, but neither could get it. He was in there for the hit. Bauer on the play. Move from first to third. And the Yankees are threatening again as Yogi Berra, who hit into a double play in the fourth, and grab it out in the second, steps up for the third time in that leadoff spot, that cleanup spot. So, Thurman on first and third with one out. Berra, the uh, Yankee cleanup batter up there. Here's the pitch. And there goes a line shot to right. It is in fair territory. Deep in the right field corner. Bauer scores. Mantle goes to third. And Yogi Berra is in at second. Ibarra whistled one for two bases, which hit about five to ten feet inside the right field line, deep in the right field corner. Bauer came in to score, and Mantle moved to third on uh, Barra's two-bagger. So Yogi Berra comes up with a uh, big double to drive in Yankee run. Number two, New York leads by a two-nothing score. With that hit, Vera ties the series record of 58 hits set by Frankie Frisch and also puts him ahead of Babe Ruth as all-time leader in total bases. Elston Howard will draw an attentional walk. And that means the sacks will be loaded with one out and New York in front by a score of 2 to nothing. The Yankees have seven hits off Burdett. Seven has been the key to Burdett wins. The four that he has in the past all have been seven hitters. But seven so far this afternoon have put the Yankees out in front. Seven hits to three. Two runs to nothing. Howard now goes to first with the intentional walk. And here comes Bill Scarab, who has grabbed it out and flat out. Just jumping up there now with the faces loaded. Mandel's at third. Vera's at second. Howard is at first. Scour the batter. Three on. There's one out. The score, Yankees two and the Braves nothing. In this bottom half of the sixth inning. Barnett goes to the Rosen bag. Now he's ready. Scouring and waiting. The runners edge off the bases. The infield is playing in just about two or three feet off the infield grass. Here's the pitch. And there goes a shot into right field for a hit. Battle comes in to score. Holds it third as Aaron comes up with the ball and short right makes a fine throw into the plate. Manager Fred Haney is going out to the mound. Bill Scourin whistled one. A low liner between first and second in the right field to drive in the run as Mantle scored. Vera, after making a turn, held a third on Aaron's fine throw to the plate. Howard is at second, Scourin at first, and Fred Haney is out of the mound along with Del Crandall and the pitcher Lou Burnett. New York now leads 3 0. And the bases remain loaded with Vera, Howard, and Scourin on the sacks. And Gil McDougall, whose homer accounted for the first run this afternoon, coming up. And that will be all for Lou Burnett. Lou Burnett leaves, gets a nice hand, and now Juan Pizarro is coming in. Fred Haney now leaves the mound after uh, welcoming Juan Pizarro, who is coming to take over, and it's quite a jam that Pizarro and the Braves find themselves in. The Yankees have scored twice in this bottom half of the sixth inning. They lead by a 3 nothing score, and now Pizarro, who is a left-hander, just 21 years old, is taking his warm-up pitches. This fellow is really fast. 
this past season. He won six and lost four with a fine earned run average of 2.69. And included in his 96 and two-third innings pitched, 84 strikeouts. He came out of Puerto Rico to a sensational debut with Jacksonville of the Class A Sally League in 1956, where he won 23 and lost six. As a rookie, last year with the Braves, he had a five and six record, and in the World Series last season, he pitched two innings without being involved in a decision. He's got a fine fastball, also throws a screwball. Good changeup. And he's out there now warming up. The youngest Brave in the series. After being sent to Wichita, he was recalled by Milwaukee in July. Well, he has his work cut out for him. Barrow's on third. Howard is on second. Scourin is on first. There's one out. That was when Lumpy bought it foul with two strikes. And now McDougal steps in to face the southpaw, Juan Pizarro. The first pitch, and there goes a fly ball to deep left field. Coming is going back. He's on the side of path. He's still going back. He can't get it. He hits and bounces into the bullpen on the hop for a ground rule double. Gil McDougal sent a long fly ball close to 400 feet. We turn on the cinder path. It looked as if Covington had difficulty with the sun. He seemed to turn the wrong way. He went back, gave it a good try, however. The ball hit on the cinder path near the uh, Braves' bullpen and bounced over the low railing there into the bullpen for a ground rule double. Vera comes in to score, and Howard, Scarlett held a third, McDougal at second, and here is Kubek. The first pitch is fouled back. One to Kubek. Scores Yankees five and the Braves nothing. And there's a called strike. So Juan Pizarro was greeted by Gil McDougal. With a long clap to left. Here's the pitch, and it comes in low. Nice block by Crandall, or else it would have gotten by. Scourin is on third base. McDougal is on second. The Braves infield is playing in. Yankees have scored four runs in this inning. Kubek the batter. Here's the windup. Pizarro's pitch. A swing and a miss as a curve broke away. It was scooped up by uh, Crandall. Kubek got on the strikeout. Uh, Dell, that throw to Torrey. Well, they uh, put out at first base on the strikeout. And here is Turley coming up. So Kubek got on the uh, strikeout. Ball was in and out of Crandall's mitt on a good curveball. That means there are two outs, and Turley, who is the uh, ninth man about in this bottom half of the sixth inning, now steps in. The Braves infield goes back to uh, regular depth. Curly working behind a 5-0 lead. Swings the first pitch and misses. Strike one. Scourin is on third base. McDougal on second. Gills double drove in Vera and Howard. Here's the pitch. Oh, there goes a hit to left field. Scourin comes in to score. McDougal's on the way. He'll score too as the throw goes to second base. a liner into short left. Drives in two runs and Hank Bauer will be coming up for the second time in the inning. The Yankees have now erupted with six runs in the bottom half of the sixth and lead by a 7 nothing score. Bauer who is one for three to let off the parade of Yankee base hits in the sixth inning with a single comes up now for the second time. The oddity is that both outs in the inning have been by strikeouts. Pizarro with the stretch and the pause. The pitch, and it is a called strike one to Hank Bauer.
McMahon and Willie are both warming up for Milwaukee. Here's the pitch. Barra swings and misses for strike two. Two strikes. The count to Hank Bauer. Bob Turley is the runner at first base. Six runs have come across for New York in this inning. They lead 7-0. There's a long foul, which is headed up into the upper deck and far outside the left field line. Count holds at strike two to Bauer. Juan Pizarro, 21-year-old left-hander on the mound, steps back now. The Yankee power has exploded here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Charlie on first. Stretching the balls by Pizarro. Here's the pitch, and it comes in wide. The count now is ball one, strike two. Ball one, strike two to Bauer. The outfield is playing a pull around toward left. There's the pitch, and it gets away from Crandall. On the way to second base goes Turley, and he goes in standing up. That was a low pitch. It almost hit Bauer, who had to jump out of the way, and it scored as a wild pitch. So that means that Turley is in the scoring position at second. Count now is two and two to Bauer. Hank pauses outside the banners box. The Yankees have ten hits altogether. They've had six hits here in the uh, sixth inning and have scored six runs in this frame. Here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. And so in this inning, oddly enough, all outs for strikeouts. Here are the totals in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Six runs, six hits, no errors, and one is left. The score at the end of six, Yankee seven, Milwaukee nothing. Allen with a giant offer from Papermate that tops them all. Listen, how'd you like a genuine Papermate pen free? How'd you like a genuine Papermate refill free? Sound good? Well, that's exactly what you get. Free pen, free refill. When you buy Papermate's famous two-tone pen at the regular $1.69 price. What a bargain. As it says right on the special Papermate display, you get a two-tone pen worth $1.69, plus an extra silver tip refill worth $0.49, cents, plus a retractable schoolmate utility pen worth $0.39. Cents. A two fifty seven value. All three for only $1.69. How about that? A two fifty seven value for only $1.69. Look for the special Papermate display at stores everywhere. Buy your two-tone pen at regular price. Get an extra pen, an extra refill, free from Papermate. This sensational offer is limited. So hurry and get your free Papermate pen and free refill now. We move now into the seventh inning. Bobby Richardson goes in to play third base for the New York Yankees. And coming up for the Braves will be Wes Covington. Well, the crowd here in New York came to its feet collectively on the bottom half of the sixth inning as New York, which has been tamed as far as any big innings are concerned throughout the series, erupted with ten men batting in the sixth. And when the final tally was posted in the bottom half of the inning, Yankees had scored a six. And now lead by a 7-0 score. The Braves earlier had a big inning in this ball game. Not in this game, we should say, in the series. So there have been two big frames. Now the first pitch is a uh, called strike to Covington. They recall in Milwaukee. Braves come up with seven runs in one inning. The pitch to Wes is swung on. There's a high foul, which is going off to the right and up on the roof. Drops down from there, down below. So it's strike two to Covington. Torrey and Crandall will follow. It's been a combination up to this point of Turley's pitching and the Yankees hitting, which have combined for that 7-0 lead. Turley is sharp as I have seen him all season. Looks him for the sign. Right-hander delivers, and the pitch is in the dirt, stopped by Berra. Canna's ball, one strike, two. Turley's control is not as razor-sharp as it has been on some occasions, but it is good enough to keep the batters loose up there. 
And he makes tremendous use of the uh, curve in combination with the fastball. Here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. Covington is out on a strikeout. That is the ninth strikeout by Turley. And it means that he has posted more than any pitcher so far in the series. In the first game, Ford had eight and seven innings. In the third game, Larson, eight and seven innings. And now it's nine for Turley as Torrey comes up. Torrey is walked and grounded out. The pitch is a fastball which moves Torrey back slightly. Ball one. It's been an amazing comeback for Turley, who left after a third of an inning in his series debut, but has come back so strong in this game today. Here it comes, and the pitch comes in low for ball two. Torrey has walked, and he grounded out. To be followed by Del Crandall. There have been three hits so far for the Braves. They've all been singles. The Shane Deans, Bruton, and Matthews. Here's the pitch. And one is right down the slot for a called strike. That makes it ball two and strike one to Torrey. 65,279 are here witnessing this ball game. Here's the two and one pitch. And there's a hopper going out to scour. And he plays it deep behind the bag. Runs to the base for the out. And Torrey is out number two. That brings up Del Crandall who looked at a called strike three and has grounded out. in this seventh inning. Bob Turley in the mound. You know, it's an odd thing the way that the Yankees eventually uh, got Turley. When they signed up uh, a fellow named Bob Turley originally, they signed up the wrong Bob Turley. It was Bob's uncle. Here's the pitch now to Crandall. It comes in wide for a ball. They heard of this young fellow with a fine reputation. They looked in the phone book, and there was a Bob Turley, but it was the wrong Turley. They finally got him some years later. The right one. There's another pitch low for ball two. And a little inspection of the baseball. Al Barlick obliges Yogi Berra with a new one, which is going out to the mound. Two outs. We're in the uh, top of the seventh inning. And the batter, Del Crandall, with a 2-0 count. The score, Yankee 7, Milwaukee nothing. For New York, 10 hits so far. For the Braves, 3. Now Crandall in and waiting. Turley gets the sign. Here comes the pitch, and it sails a bit high, ball three. Turley, you know, does not use a windup. He just takes that ball, quite as little bat, belt high, leans back, and fires. Three and oh. Here's the pitch, and this one is wide for ball four, and Crandall draws a walk. That is the uh, third walk given up by Turley, and it brings up Logan, who has struck out twice, one's called and one's swinging. Batters facing Turley all season will tell you that he is as deceptive as there is in the league at hiding the ball. He keeps it in his glove to the very last split second before uh, bringing back the arm and firing it toward the plate. They also say it's tough to time his style pitching without the uh, big windup. There's the uh, stretch and the pause. The pitch to Logan is over for a called strike. A fastball came in just above the knees. So with Crandall on first and two outs, the uh, Milwaukee Braves trying to get back in this game. McMahon is warming up for Milwaukee. Here's the pitch, and it misses the outside corner. The count now is one and one to Logan. Outfield pulled around just slightly for Johnny. Crandall, the runner. Turley likes to take that deep, big sigh, big breath before pitching. He comes in with a fastball high and inside, moving Logan back. On the count now is ball two, strike one. Turley is 28 years old. He's 6'2", 214 pounds. In his lifetime World Series record, Shows uh, a win. And three setbacks. Two balls, strike one. Logan at the plate. Crandall up first. The stretch and the pause by Turley. Here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. Makes the count now. Two and two to Logan. Turley topped the 20 victory total for the first time in his career last season with 21. And 
21 is unsurpassed among Yankee pitches since Gomez won 26 in 1934. Here's the pitch. A slow curve is wide. On the count now to Logan is three and two. Crandall on first will be moving in the next pitch with two outs in the top half of the seventh inning. And the Yankees holding a seven nothing lead. Shirley uh, steps down, smooths out the dirt for the moment. Now he's back. Looks going to get the sign from Barrow. Crandall on first base. We're moving on the pitch. Here it comes. And there goes a fly ball into short right. Coming in fast is Bauer. He's got it. So the side retired in this top of the seventh with no runs, no hits, no errors, and one left. And the score after the uh, top half of the seventh inning. The Yankees seven and the Braves nothing. Uh, Gil McDougall has had a big afternoon with a home run and a ground rule a double, which is driven in two. You know, Gill's a real champion, and he looks it too. A Gillette man, here in a recorded message is how Gill answers that. How do I shave? The only way I know to get a decent shave. That's with a Gillette blade and a Gillette razor. And now, as a World Series special, you get a Gillette one-piece TV razor for only 79 cents. 79 cents for a Gillette TV razor, dispenser of easy-shaven Gillette blue blades, and a compact travel case. Thousands and thousands of you fans have bought this World Series special in the last few days. You know what a terrific bargain it is. Modern one-piece design, double-edge economy, wonderful shaving luxury. If you haven't snapped one up, better get with it. This offer is good only while the supply lasts. So stop at a store near you and get your Gillette TV razor for only 79 cents. We move now into the uh, bottom half of the seventh inning. And now for the New York Yankees, leading off will be Bobby Richardson. Bobby went in, in the uh, top of the inning, defensively, and now is up there at the plate. He's a right-handed batter, batting against the uh, southpaw Juan Pizarro. Here's the uh, windup, and the pitch is over for a called strike. Bobby is 0 for 4 in the series. Pizarro all set to work. Goes to the windup, delivers, and there's a grounder right back to the mound. The pitcher has it. They throw to first for the out. So there's one away in the bottom half of the seventh. And here steps up Mickey Mantle, who is 2 for 3 today. Both have been singles. batting right-handed against the southpaw Pizarro. The pitch is a fastball, which is inside for ball one. On deck will be Yogi Berra. The score, Yankees seven and the Braves nothing. And that's the bottom of the seventh. There's the sign now from Crandall. Pizarro set to work, starts the windup, and the pitch to Mantle. Swung on, there's a high foul. It's going back out of play, and the count now is one and one. One and one to Mantle. Yogi Berra on deck. The Yankees have ten hits altogether. Now Mantle steps back in and waiting. The outfield playing him deep. Here's the pitch, and it comes in low. The count now is two balls and a strike. Two balls, strike one to Mantle. The sign now from Crandall. Pizarro winds. The left-hander's pitch on the way is inside, almost hitting Mantle. It skipped right back to the screen. Count now is ball three, strike one. That came in low around the ankles. Three and one count. Pizarro completed seven of ten starts this year for Milwaukee. Here's the three and one pitch. And there goes a long foul, which is off to the right and up on the upper deck. So the count now is three and two. Juan steps back off the mound, rubbing up a new ball with the three and two count to Mantle. 
Now into the windup he goes. Here's the pitch. And there's another foul, which was back out of play. And the count holds at three and two. Well, Mantle, you know, is a chance. If the Yankees continue to uh, stay in series to come, or if this one is extended, to eventually top the uh, record held by Babe Ruth of World Series homers. Mantle has 11, the Babe had 15. Here's the pitch, and it comes in wide for ball four. Mantle draws the walk, putting a man on first with one out. And Yogi Berra, who sent a sharp drive to right for a two-bagger, which drove in a run in the sixth, steps in now for the fourth time this afternoon. Yogi uh, grounded out on the uh, second on a fine play by Torrey, who moved quickly to his right, came up with the ball, through to the pitcher covering for the out. Here's the pitch. Vera sends a little dribbler to the third baseman Matthews. He throws to first base for the out. That was right off the end of Vera's bat. And as a consequence, Matthews had to come in for the ball. He had no chance for the uh, play at second, so he made the play over to first. And on the play, Mantle moved into second base. Here is Elston Howard, who draws a nice hand for his fine uh, defensive play. Elston is flat out twice and has drawn an intentional walk. Here's the pitch, and it's a breaking pitch over for a call strike one to Howard. Mantle is on second. There are two outs in this bottom half of the seventh inning. Yankees lead 7-0. Strike one to Howard. Juan Pizarro with the stretch and the pause. The pitch. A swing and a miss for strike two. Two strikes the count to Howard. Now Mantle edges off second. Here it comes. And there is a foul tip which is in and out of Crandall's mitt. So Howard keeps a life up there with the count. Now remaining at strike two. Mantle at second, two away in the bottom half of this seventh inning. Mickey takes a good-sized lead as Logan, the shortstop, is far in the hole for Howard, a right-handed batter. Mantle on second. Here's the pitch. And it's a strike three call. A good, sharp-breaking pitch on the outside corner for the strikeout, which retires the side in the seventh with no runs, no hits, no errors, and one left. And the score at the end of seven, Yankees seven, Braves nothing. Hello there, everybody. I'm Mel Allen with a giant offer from Papermate that tops them all. Listen, how'd you like a genuine Papermate pen free? How'd you like a genuine Papermate refill free? Sound good? Well, that's exactly what you get. Free pen, free refill. When you buy Papermate's famous two-tone pen at the regular $1.69 price. What a bargain. As it says right on the special Papermate display, you get a two-tone pen worth $1.69 plus an extra silver tip refill worth 49 cents plus a retractable schoolmate utility pen worth 39 cents. A two fifty seven value. All three for only a dollar sixty nine. How about that? A two fifty seven value for only a dollar sixty nine. Look for the special paper mate display at stores everywhere. Buy your two tone pen at regular price. Get an extra pen, an extra refill, free from paper mate. The sensational offer is limited. So hurry and get your free paper mate pen and free refill now. Here's the eighth inning, and Harry Hannibrink, who is 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter in the series, moves into a bat for Juan Pizarro. So Hannibrink, who is a left handed batter, is in there now to face Bob Turley as the eighth inning gets on the way. Carl Willie is warming up now for the Braves. Hannibrink, a left handed batter, and the first pitch is inside for a ball. Harry played as utility infielder, outfielder, and pinch hitter this past season for Milwaukee. He spent 11 years playing for the Braves organization. Wears glasses at the plate. Up there now with the ball, one count, leading off the eighth. Turley all set. Here's the pitch, and it's over for a called strike. One and one. Bob Turley, who so far this afternoon has yielded but three hits, and they've all been singles. Ready for that one-on-one -on -one pitch. Here it comes. And a curveball is over for ball strike two. Ball one, strike two. Well, when Bob has that fastball whistling, as he does today, it makes that curve even more effective. 
Here's the next pitch. And there's a pop-up foul. Coming back for the ball is Vera. He's waiting. He's got it. So, one away in the top of the eighth. The batter now is Bill Bruton, who has one of the three brave hits. Bruton is walked. He is struck out. And he's single to left center. Shirley putting on the steam here as we come down the home stretch of this game. Bruton now steps in. Red Chainings is on deck. Shirley set. Brings back the arm. Fires. And it's a fastball for a call strike one to Bruton. Shirley is showing the form this afternoon, which enabled them to win 21 games this past season. The pitch comes in low. And is one and one to Bruton. Bob led the Yankees in many departments in pitching. Here's the one and one pitch. And there goes a liner into short left. It's in there for a base hit. He led by Elston Howard. He fumbles it for the moment. Now picks it up. And uh, throws in a second. But Bruton cannot advance past first. Elston a little difficulty in just picking the ball up off the ground as it rolled there. So Bruton has his second hit. And the batter now is Red Chaneast, who is one for two and is sacrificed. It was Chaneast who sent that fly ball on which Howard made such a tremendous play in the sixth. Bruton is having a great series. Six for 12, he's batting 500. He's on first. The pitch, Chaneast chops one just outside the left field line. Foul ball for strike one. Red has choked way up on the bat. Took sort of a half swing that time and almost hit the mark. It's strike one to Shane Deans. Be followed by Eddie Matthews. Bob Turley in the mound. He led the Yankees in victories, games started, innings pitched, strikeouts, complete games, most everything. He delivers wide. And the count now is one and one. Shane Deans sacrificed in the first. He singled in the uh, third, and that was the first... Braves hit, and their only uh, base hit through the first five innings. They had two more in the uh, sixth. They've had one more here in the eighth. Bruton on first. Here's the one-to-one -one pitch, and it's inside, moving Shane Deans back from the plate. The count now is ball two and strike one. Ball two, strike one to Shane Deans. The switch hitter back in, waiting, batting left against Turley. Outfield not playing red too deep. Here's the pitch. And there's another foul going off to the left. Count is two and two to Shane Deanst. Yogi Berra uh, rubbing up the ball before flipping it back out to Turley in the mound. So far this afternoon, only one Brave has been able to uh, reach second. That was Bruton, who got there back in the first inning. Bruton's on first right now. Shane Danes pops one up. The shortstop, Tony Kubek, waiting. And he's got it. So that means two away. Bruton on first. On the batter now is Matthews, who is one for three. He is single to right. Coming up now for the fourth time in this top half of the eighth inning. Matthews steps in, batting third in the Braves lineup. The outfield finds Bauer playing him deep and right, just on the edge of the cinder path there. As a left-handed batter, digs in at the plate. Shirley glances toward first. Now delivers. And it's a curve over for a call strike one. That curve ball has been tremendously effective at Shirley this afternoon. His breaking pitch is something to watch. He uses the curve and the slider and the fastball and the changeup. It's strike one to Matthews. Here's the pitch. And it's wide for a ball. When I first uh, saw Turley when he came up to the big leagues, Bob used to just to rear back and use that fastball almost exclusively. But in recent years, with fine coaching, Bob has changed his pitching style altogether to get in those curves and change-ups. A swing and a miss by Matthews. And it's now ball one, strike two. And Bob, who started out as a fastball artist, who had control problems, worked so hard that he became a control artist, 
And along with the uh, varieties of pitches that he now possesses, he's a very rough customer. Ball one, strike two to Matthews. Bruton on first, they're two away in the eighth. Stretch in the pause by Turley. Here's the pitch. And there's a little tap going out to Richardson. The throw to first for the out. Wasn't too much wood on that ball as it dribbled out toward the third baseman who threw out Matthews to retire the side. It's on the uh, top of the eighth. No runs. A hit. No errors. And one left. And the score after the top half of the eighth inning. Yankees seven. Milwaukee nothing. They tell me 90 million fans are following the series in homes, offices, factories, and stores throughout the country. When you tell that many people about a bargain like Gillette's TV Razor for only 79 cents, you know the supply won't last long. Here's what your 79 cents buys. An up-to-the-minute Gillette TV Razor, a dispenser of Gillette blue blades with the sharpest edges ever honed, and smart-looking travel case. And you're guaranteed clean, clean shaves. Long-lasting shaves with speed and comfort that's second to none. The Gillette TV Razor is a one-piece instrument. Just twist the handle, and the razor opens for fast blade changing. An instant cleaning. You get double-edged economy, too. Save money. It's a regular $1 value. A Gillette TV Razor, dispenser of Gillette Blue Blades and Styrene Travel Case for just 79 cents. Remember, the supply is limited, so hurry and get yours. In the bottom half of the eighth inning, Carl Willie takes over the mound for the Milwaukee Braves. Carl Willie, who is 6 feet 175 pounds, he's 27 years old, a right-hander. He comes from Cherryfield, Maine. He just this past year, for a great performance, won the uh, Sporting News Award as the uh, National League Rookie Pitcher of the Year. The applause is for Roy Campanella who's leaving the ballpark, being assisted by his attendants at this time. And he draws a fine hand as he has in all his entrances and departures from Yankee Stadium. Carl Willey out there. 1-9, lost 7 this past year for Milwaukee. The batter is scouring, and here's the pitch. It's a fastball which comes over for a call strike one. Carl was the American Association's most valuable player of 57 with a 21-6 record at Wichita. He winds, delivers, and a curve skips by Crandall. It's one and one. Carl was farmed out again this season. He was called back to the Braves in June, and he gave Milwaukee a big pennant boost. Ended up with 9-7 and seven as a record. And a fine 2.64 earned run average. He's in at the windup. Here's the pitch. And a curve is high to Scourum. The count now is ball two and strike one. Scourum has had one for three this afternoon, and his single drove in a run in the big Yankee sixth. The Yankees lead 7 0. Here's the pitch, and a uh, swing and a miss. A fastball in the outside corner levels the count now at two and two to Scourum. On deck is Gil McDougal. Here's the windup. Willie delivers a curve, and there's a foul off to the right. The count holds a two and two to Scourum. In the third inning, the Yankees scored the first run of the game as McDougal hit a homer up against the foul pole screen and left. But in the sixth, the Yankees bombarded uh, Milwaukee with six runs on six hits. Scourin waiting with a two and two count. Here's the pitch, and it's a swing and a miss as a fastball puts Scourin out on a strikeout. So Carl Willie gets the uh, first man that he pitches to, and here's Gil McDougal. Gil McDougal is stepping up. Another uh, fan comes racing across the field. That will delay the game for a few seconds more. And this one descends on Willie at the uh, mound. Now that the mission is accomplished, he's leaving the ballpark. Or at least the uh, playing field at the moment. Chances are that he'll continue out of the park. 
So we're waiting for the uh, exodus of the uh, fan there, and uh, McDougal now steps in. left in an escort waiting for him when he uh, got over to the sidelines. Here's the pitch, and McDougal takes low. Ball one to McDougal, who's had a big day with a homer. And a grand rule double, which drove in two more. He swings and misses. The count now is one and one. One to McDougal. Willie winds, delivers, and he comes in low for two ball strike one. Gill's big double, which hit it left and skipped into the uh, bullpen there, came with the sacks loaded. In between his homer and his two bagger, Gill grounded out. Two ball, strike one to count. Carl Willie all set, goes from the windup. Here's the pitch, and a fastball is on the outside corner for a call strike. Count now is two and two. Willie, who is Maine's gift to the big leagues, looks in to get the sign. He's all set to work. Here comes the pitch. And there goes a high fly ball to right, curving foul, and landing in the seats outside the right field line. The count is two and two to McDougal. Blue Burnett. Left during the Yankees uprising during the sixth inning. Then in came Juan Pizarro, and Willie came on to start this bottom of the eighth. Two and two to McDougal. The windup. The right hand is next pitch. A curve, which is low. On the count now is three and two. Willie was called up from Wichita after the uh, season began. He won the uh, first game for the Braves in mid-June. At one point, he had a 9-4 and four record, including six straight victories. Here's the 3-2 and two pitch, and it's a swing and a miss for strike three, a foul tip which nestled in Crandall's mitt for the strikeout. So Willie, with that uh, bristling fastball, has now struck out two, and that brings up Tony Kubek, who is one for three. Earl Gillespie uh, points out that among uh, Willie's feats this past season, a no-hitter at Wichita. Two outs, bottom half of the eighth inning. Here's the windup, and the pitch comes in high to Kubek. It's ball one. Score Yankees seven, the Braves nothing. Yankees of ten hits, Milwaukee four. Ball one, the count to Kubek. Willie delivers, and there's a swing and a miss. One and one. Here's the windup, and the next pitch on the way is swung on and missed. Another bristling fastball for strike two. Ball one, strike two. This Willie is really bearing down in his first series appearance. Despite his late start in the presence of Spawn and Burdett on the staff, Willie pitched the most shutouts for the Braves, a total of four. Here's the next pitch, and it misses the inside corner of fastball, and the count now is two and two to Kubek. Tony is one for three. He's sandwiched in a single between the strikeouts in the third and the sixth. So it's now two and two the count. Here's the windup by the right-hander. And the next pitch on the way, a change-up pitch, which is sent a short left. Racing in his coming is still moving. He's got it. And then he falls to the ground. So the side retired in the bottom half of the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors. And nobody left. And the score at the end of eight innings, Yankees seven, the Braves nothing. Here now, 
the ninth inning. And uh, coming up for Milwaukee will be Aaron, Covington, and Torrey. Maybe more. Aaron, who is batting in the uh, number four slot for the Braves, has flied out twice and he has struck out. And Bob Turley, who so far this afternoon has pitched a four-hitter, delivers a curve high for a ball. The four hits have all been singles off Turley. Here's the pitch. Another curve. This two is high. It's ball two to Aaron. 7 nothing. The Yankees are leading on this game, which is a must game for New York. And if the Yankees uh, hold on to this one here in this night, it means that the two teams will return to Milwaukee for action will resume the uh, day after tomorrow. The next pitch is over for a called strike. And it's ball two and strike one. Two balls, strike one to Aaron. Strong right-handed batter in there and waiting. Turley delivers. And there's a foul back called the uh, press box beyond it. Count now is two and two. Two and two to Aaron. Turley uh, ready with a new ball. Well, it seems that the pitching is so superb on either one side or the other that trading shutouts has now appeared to be a matter of course. Ready for that two and two pitch. Here it comes. A curve is missed. A beautiful hook on the outside corner for the strikeout. Now that means that Bob Turley has now 10 strikeouts. So he struck out 10 instantly. The uh, brave uh, pitchers have struck out nine Yankees. This is the 27th time that a series pitcher has reached that 10 strikeout mark. And uh, Turley was the last to do it against the Dodgers in the 56 series. He found 11 that time, but lost 1-0. The pitch to Covington is ball one. Covington is 0-3. He's fly to center, and he's struck out twice. Here it comes. And a swing and a miss on a pitch which broke in and toward the ground. Makes it 1-1 one one to Covington. Turley breaking pitches are as sharp as they can possibly be. You know, in the last uh, few games, these teams have traded shutouts. Larson and Duran beat the Braves 4 nothing in the uh, third game. Then Spawn blanked New York 3 nothing in the fourth game. And right now, Turley leads by a 7 nothing score with one out in the ninth. Coming to the batter. One and one the count. Here comes the pitch. And this one is in the dirt, and it skips back behind uh, the catcher, Barra, to make it now ball two and strike one. So far with 19 uh, strikeouts for both sides, they're getting up close to the uh, record. The most strikeouts in a game for both clubs, 22. Count now is ball two and strike one to Covington. Charlie Ruddy delivers. And there's a ground ball which is into left field. It was off the glove of Kubek and made a nice stop, moving far to his right. But uh, it was deep in the hole. Tony could just slow it up. And Covington is on first base with a single. So that means that the uh, Braves now have their fifth hit. All have been singles. And we're getting a pinch runner. Casey Wise will run for West Covington. So there's a pinch runner at first base. And the batter now is Frank Torrey, who has walked and grounded out twice to uh, Bill Scourum. There's one out, one on in the top of the ninth. The score, Yankees seven and the Braves nothing. Stretch in the pause by Turley. Here's the pitch. And there's a high pop-up going to short right. McDougald drifts back. He's waiting, and he's got it. There are two outs. Casey Wise, the pitch runner at first. And the batter is Del Crandall, who has struck out, grounded out, and walked. And Bob Turley out there hoping to make it a Yankee shutout. 
and the third shutout in the last three games. Up there now with two outs, one on in the ninth. As Del Crandall, the last Milwaukee hope to keep things alive in this game, steps in. Infield is playing back for this final out. Turley with the uh, stretch and the pause. Here's the pitch. And there's a ground ball going out to Kubek at short. Over to McDougal. The force is made on Wise, and there's the ball game. In the ninth, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man is left. And the final score totals the Yankees. Seven runs, ten hits, no errors. Milwaukee, no runs, five hits, no errors. In just a moment, we'll review the highlights of today's game for you. Hello, I'm Joan Bennett, and I've just had the first permanent ever created for women over 25. It's lotion prom. You and I know that after 25, our hair begins to show age. It doesn't have the life, the springiness, the bounce it once had. I noticed it. That's why I was so delighted with prom. The new permanent especially created for us, for women over 25. Prom has a brand new waving lotion that neutralizes naturally. Prom uses no chemical neutralizer. That's why you get a new kind of curl. A curl that swirls at the crown, curls at the end. It's the liveliest, springiest, longest lasting curl you've ever known. Makes your hair look years younger. Do as I do. Use Lotion Prom. The new permanent especially created for women over 25. And the story of today's fifth game of the 1958 World Series, the great pitching of right-hander Bob Turley. And as Bob Wolf mentioned just about an inning ago, it seems that pitching shutouts is getting to be a habit now in this ball classic, as the Yankees did it in the third ball game. Warren Spahn turned one in yesterday, a two-hitter. And today was Bob Turley, a 21-game winner on the season, who comes up with a great shutout and keeps the Yankees' flickering hopes alive as we now go to the sixth game of the 1958 classic and will be played at Milwaukee County Stadium on Wednesday. Bob Turley, simply great. He had a great curveball this afternoon. He struck out 10 Milwaukee batters, and he walked only three as he gave five hits along the way and all singles. Lou Burdett was knocked out of the box for the first time in five starts against the Yankees in the last two World Series. He had a perfect record, four wins and no defeats, and five, or rather four completed games going into action this afternoon. But he was saved sir, by some great plays by Milwaukee in the first two innings. And then in the last half of the third, McDougal hit a home run that broke the scoreless ball game, gave the Yankees a 1-0 lead. And then the roof really caved in in the last half of the sixth as the Yankees send up ten batters, scoring six runs on six hits. Five of the runs charged to Lou Burdett. So it was all over as far as the ball game was concerned. If you want to go back to the third, on the home run by Gil McDougal. A great play by Alston Howard in the sixth inning on a diving shoestring catch, a rolling catch in short left field in the sixth inning. Stop Milwaukee only serious threat, as the Braves today managed to get only one runner to second base, and that was back in the first inning when Bruton walked, Shane Dean sacrificed, moving Billy into scoring pos uh, position at second base, but he died there as Matthews fly to right and Aaron fly to center field. So it was quite a ball game and a big one, the one the Yankees needed as the World Series now stands, Milwaukee three victories, and the New York Yankees two. Neither manager, Fred Haney, nor Casey Stengel would mention their possible starters for the game on Wednesday. Haney because he was hoping his boys could wrap it up this afternoon. Casey Stengel because he wanted to throw in everybody if he had to to save this ball game here at Yankee Stadium today. But the Yankees came up with that big six-run rally and the batting star for New York this afternoon was second baseman Gil McDougal who going into this uh, fifth game had not had an extra base hit nor a run batted in. He had three hits and 14 times at bat but in the third he hit a long shot down the left field foul line that hit the foul pole, and that gave the Yankees their 1-0 lead. Then in the sixth inning, he came up with a double to deep left center field, driving in two more runs, and uh, Gill finished with two hits in four times at bat, driving in three of the Yankees' seven runs. Yogi Berra doubled home a run in the sixth inning. Uh, Bill Scourin single home one across in that wild sixth. McDougal had two runs batted in with that double in the sixth, and the pitcher Bob Turley. Helped his own cause with a single left field 
driving in two runs, and that capped the rally as the Yankees went out in front by a score of 7 nothing. Bob Turley combining with three Milwaukee pitchers, Lou Burdett, Juan Pizarro, who replaced Burdett on the last half of the sixth inning, and Carl Welly, who pitched the eighth. The four pitches total today, uh, 19 strikeouts. Turley had 10. Burdett had a total of four, Pizarro three, and Carl Willey appearing in a World Series for the first time in his baseball career, pitching the last half of the eighth inning, struck out Scourin and McDougal, and then got Kubek on a great uh, catch by Covington in the short fly ball of the left field, so he had two of Milwaukee's nine strikeouts. We had a very fine crowd here at Yankee Stadium this afternoon, a cool day with uh, 65,279, so the five-game total now is 301,000. 175. This was kind of, dam- of a damaging blow to Fred Haney and his Braves because he had hoped that Lou Burdett, who has been a Yankee tormentor now for the last two uh, series, uh, would be able to turn the Yankees back, and Milwaukee on its way home tonight would go back as world champions. But the Yankees, a determined crew, really came on hard and uh, smashed Milwaukee by that score of 7 to nothing. So everybody right now, I imagine, around the nation is guessing who will be working in the uh, sixth game of the series coming Wednesday there was some anticipation that manager Fred Haney would probably come back with Warren Spahn who worked in Sunday's ball game but that'll give Spahn only two days rest it might well be that he'll come up with the big right hander Bob Rush who pitched such great, such great baseball against the Yankees uh, the other day, going six innings, allowing two runs and only three base hits. As far as manager Casey Stengel is concerned, he could very well come up with Don Larson, who pitched a beautiful ball game against the Milwaukee Braves, combining with Ryan Dorn for the shutout in the third game of the series played here at Yankee Stadium. In that ball game, Larson worked seven against the Braves, allowing no runs and six hits. He walked three, and he struck out eight. Then Dorn came on and blanked the Braves the rest of the way. So I think it's rather unusual... In this 1958 World Series that we have seen, uh, three consecutive shutouts by Larson and Duran in the third ball game, and then uh, by Warren Spahn yesterday, a brilliant two-hitter, and then, of course, today's shutout turned in by Bob Turley. So the big six-foot-two-inch right-hander who goes over 200 pounds uh, came on in great style, championship performance, and certainly has given these Yankee followers on the Yankee ball club plenty of hope now because you never down, of course, until you're counted out, and the New York Yankees have always been a ball club who have been able to come back strong when the blue chips are down, and certainly they're down now because all the Braves need is one victory. They have to win one of the last two, while the New York Yankees must take the last two ball games. Now, New York at Milwaukee County Stadium, uh, the Braves won the first two games of the series, and out at Milwaukee uh, County Stadium last year, uh, the Yankees won two ball games. So it should be very, very interesting as we move on now and move into Milwaukee for a Wednesday and possibly Thursday's ball game, the sixth and seventh games of the campaign. Both teams will be heading for Milwaukee after, right after the ball game. The boys now getting ready. They'll be taken to a bus out to the airports here in uh, New York City, heading on, and we'll have a day off tomorrow. And I imagine that both Casey Stengel and I'm sure that manager Fred Haney will want to send the uh, players through some batting practice uh, tomorrow, as there hasn't been too much uh, hard hitting except in spurts by both ball clubs throughout the first uh, five games of the series. And don't forget, folks, we'll be back on the air Wednesday afternoon at 2.45 Eastern Daylight Time to report the crucial sixth game of the 1958 World Series for you direct from County Stadium in Milwaukee. Now, this is Earl Gillespie along with Bob Wolf saying smooth sailing, smooth shaving, and good afternoon for your host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company.